everyone. Sorry about that uh, technical difficulties that we are having with Hope. However, we were able to get Jess on. So welcome back to Monica S. Martinez Live. And uh, again, we apologize for the technical difficulties we are having. I hope that you are able to join us back. Jess, I didn't want to like pronounce your name all incorrect. So <laughs> I said Brenna. Yeah, Brenna? that's correct. Oh, this is mm -hmm. Ooh, there you go <laughs> very nice well thank you for joining us and um everyone jess is a dating coach author and radio personality who focuses on the lgbt community so jess yes let them know a little more about you before i start you know inquiring you with my questions wow you you already said a lot um so you are correct. I am a dating coach for the LGBT community. Um, I also host two podcasts that you can find on iTunes. The first one is Drinks with Jess. And this is where, this was like my passion project. So this is where we bring the LGBT community together and its allies um, to share in each other's missions and help each other grow. Because you, you really do need not only a strong community, but need to realize that you're a part of the world too. And there are so many people out there that are there to support you. And the new podcast that I launched in February, the Dating Pool Podcast, of course, that is going um, out to all the women in the LGBT uh, community and to serve them as far as my expertise in dating and relationships. But other than that, I just, right now I'm just hanging out. My dog finally uh, kind of laid down. <laughs> Pretty simple. <laughs> Very nice. Well, I have some questions for you because, you yes, know. And thank you, by the way, for having me on. I can't wait. Oh, no. Thank you for joining us. And um, this is like the second show. So, of course, we had technical difficulties during the first one. The second one, I had to just tell people a little while ago, bye, and that to come back. So yeah. hopefully they'll join us back. Um, Listen, starting, starting shows is rough. I mean, even with my new show, it's been six weeks, and we still have technical difficulties once in a while. It happens. It happens. That's what I said. And I was like, we're live. You know, we just roll with the punches. You That's know? it. The best we can with what we got. So oh, you're doing great. <laughs> Thank you. So really quick, how, when did you start um, this whole dating coach? Wow. Um, well, let's see. I just turned 40. So um, this really started... Um, with the end of a long-term relationship. Um, and I was, I guess, about 32 at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and it took some time. It, it was a time in my life where I became very introspective. It was a time in my life where I decided to kind of go back um, through all of my relationships. I've always had a very big fascination with um, body language. Uh, I'm a language teacher as well. So communication is a big a uh, key aspect in, in my so, psyche. So what is my body language saying? It's saying you're comfortable and ready to roll. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You're, you're very secure in yourself, and that's a good thing to see. Extremely. You know? Yeah, Maybe yeah, and that's, and that's very important. I mean, I, I tell people all the time our communication is 93% is body language and only 7% of our words. So um, that's a, a big focus of mine. But I, I did. I became very introspective. I, I went back and, and learned how to forgive. I've learned how to get past relationships. I've learned what they taught me, so I still have a positive view. Um, and it took probably about two years of that and, and taking my own notes and being my own psych experiment before I decided to delve into coaching. Um, and in, in both of my best-selling books, I go through the exact things that I still go through today as far as all the exercises I do to, to promote confidence, um, uh, to promote um, you know, good conversations when you're first meeting people. So every step that I, that I share with everybody are the things that I actually do myself and had test groups on. Excellent, excellent. So did you feel like there was a need for this in, in your community? Oh, absolutely. The the women in my community, and and I don't, uh, I'm not saying this to to be negative or to to speak down, but we are known to be a community that is so quick to jump into the next thing that comes along, um, and I think that that insecurity runs high in our community. Um, whether it's that you don't feel that that 
you're comfortable with your body or comfortable with who you are or even comfortable being single. I love being single. I, I, I actually prefer being single as opposed to being in a relationship at this point. Um, only because I love my life so much. Um, and I get to share it with tons of people instead of just one where it could take away from all the other things that I enjoy. Um, but I do love relationships as well. I think relationships are beautiful. And if that's what you want, go for it. But uh, people decide to jump in quickly to feel that love and feel as if they're a part of something rather than finding who suits them best. And so my job is to make sure that they're focused on who suits them best rather than getting into another failed relationship. I, I actually like your, you know, how whole view on that. Um, because I, I always say like relationships today, people jump in so quick and love takes time. It just, does. you know, it takes a lot of time. I, I, you know, I just can't go off saying I love you. And I, I feel like relationships are rushed everything into like a three month span. And all of mm -hmm. a sudden they have broken up and they, like you said, mm -hmm. moved on to the next thing. And it's not just, I don't think LGB community no i think that it's just everyone here i think that today's society because we live in such a like high tech fast paced mm -hmm. society that everything is pushed into three months and you almost like have a whole entire marriage within that three months and it's just right. like whoa you don't even know who you are let alone this person because i i grew up knowing like hey, for the first six months, that's when they put on their representative and they're doing their best to impress you. You gotta, you know, go past the six months to see if you're even gonna enjoy this individual. Right. So I, I totally agree with you. Like everything is rushed. I, I'm a relationship type of girl. I love um, being in the relationship. I love that whole, you know, us thing and, you know, mm -hmm. no. Love. No, I, love, love. I, I, I love love. I think it's great, but I, I also think that you're correct that you know it takes a long time, and that's why my my second book was called Zero to Ninety because it's those first ninety days, those first three months of dating. I always used to say the crazy doesn't come out before ninety days, so I I am not one to think that that even before the 90 day mark, exclusivity should even be a, a question. I mean, dating is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be romantic and enriching and sexy and, and carefree. And those are the best times. So why rush it into something that's gonna be more of an expenditure on your time before you even know that real person? Yeah, I, I could see that, but you know, mm. I haven't been in the dating world in, mm, Let's not even talk about it. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. So when you're doing your your little, you know, segments with these people, what are your what what's your success rate? Like how 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 often do these people end up, you know, one, either being with themselves and loving themselves, two, in in a you know, solidified relationship. Um, well, as far as the percentage, um, I would venture to say if I, if I took, for example, my test group, um, 90% of them were more comfortable with themselves. One of the first things I tell everybody before they even get into the dating situation is to, and, and there was actually an article about this not too long ago, um, and I've been preaching this for years, start sleeping naked because you have to be comfortable with your body. And it was... It was amazing to me the the women that I worked with and, and some of the most beautiful women realized how uncomfortable with themselves they actually were. Because if you're gonna partner up and you're gonna be sexual with somebody else, you better be comfortable with yourself. And and I think that was an eye opener. Um, some of the, the first women that I worked with um, during that time actually found the partners that they're still with now years later. Um, so, Tried and true. I, I test everybody. Excellent. Um, yeah, I definitely agree with the whole situation of um, you have to be comfortable with yourself in order to be with someone else. You know, I personally do not sleep naked. Oh, you should, you should try I, it. You should try it. I have, but I, I have this like phobia of 
you know, like bugs or whatever. Listen, and so I have now, a dog that attracts snakes, you know, and he sleeps in my bed. But I mean, I, my my mindset is, and and I think this way about about women that I've dated, and and when they stay over the next morning, and your truest natural form as an adult is when you wake up first thing in the morning because you're you're waking up, you're a clean slate, like your eyes are hardly open, no makeup on, no nothing. So why not? start the night like that and have that whole night of, you know, I, I consider it kind of self pampering and rejuvenation, I guess mm. you would say. And, uh, and it really does allow you to, to really feel that, that natural joy that you actually have inside of you when you first wake up, just like you were a newborn. That's interesting. But again, I probably won't ever do that ever. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the most I've probably been is like just, you know, with my little, you know, panties on or something mm -hmm. and no top. Um, but yeah, I don't know. But menopause has crept in, so it, it may happen sooner than later. Oh, Monica, you know? you're not that old yet. <laughs> you are not ready for menopause yet. Well, I'm telling you, it is here and it is just not fun. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> it is not fun. It's creeping up on me, too. I'm, I'm just... <laughs> Waiting for it. Yeah, it's not. It's not a really nice, you know, time in life. <laughs> <laughs> I wish my mama would have warned me. So, um, we have a question um, from one of the viewers. They are saying, "Do you have any tricks that you could say give them um, in order to attract the right kind of person?" Um, the the biggest key to attracting the right person is to know exactly what you want. Um, I think many times, men and women, but especially women, fall into the trap of really not honing in on the actual person um, that you desire. They want somebody who's nice. They want somebody who's funny. But there's so much more that goes into it as far as your values. Um, do you want to be with somebody who's who's sociable? Because a lot of times we say, oh, well, they don't have to be sociable. They can be an introvert. But at the same time, once you go out and you want to socialize with other people and they don't want to join in in that, it becomes kind of like a drag. So one of the things that I love for people to do is to look back at their previous relationships and and look at the things that they liked about those partners and the things that they didn't like about those partners. Because those negatives are also going to be able to be changed into a positive. So if you say, well, um, I didn't like the fact that she communicated mostly via text, well, then you can take that and say, okay, I want somebody who wants to communicate via phone or face-to-face. -face. And really, relationships are, are in your hands. I mean, you get to choose. That's the great part about dating. It is in your hands. So if somebody is not fitting what you expect, then that's on you. It is no longer that other person's blame or responsibility. That's on you for saying, you know what, this person isn't exactly what I'm looking for. Because we have to be able to say no also. And, and I think people have a hard time taking control and just wait for the shoe to drop. And then they get flustered that a relationship didn't work. Well, you didn't take control of it. You know, right. not I, 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 I hear you when you say that because they say like, okay, one, we set the tone for the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's, um, I think there's a quote that says, we accept the love we believe we deserve. Absolutely. Uh, right? so, so people really have to, to get in tune with, hey, I deserve somebody who's going to treat me X, Y, and Z. And that doesn't mean buying things. It doesn't mean, you know, taking care of all the responsibilities. It, it, it's not that. And I think we get confused with what we've been taught I think we've gotten confused with what we see in movies. Things are very romanticized, and life is not like that. So it's time for, especially women, to take control, whether whether you date women or men, it doesn't matter, and say, okay, I'm going to decide who fits into my world. I'm a control freak, so that may be a problem. <laughs> I'm a control freak sometimes, too, but I tend to, I tend to let a lot of stuff go as I got older. Yeah, I mean, as I get older, I guess, yeah. Certain things don't but, bother I mean, me as they used to. Everybody deserves love. And there are so many good people out there 
that there's no reason why you can't, you know, women want and deserve to have it all. And, and what I mean by that is they deserve to have everything that they expect in a partner. But if you're dating somebody and they're not doing that, you're not going to change them. You have to look for the people who are already fitting into that mold as themselves. Right, but that that's the first problem is that, you know, people think, hey, you know, there are red flags coming up, but hey, I can change this individual. No, oh, you can't. No, you can't. <laughs> no, you, can't. It, no. You, can't, you can't change an individual. So what, what what's your take on <laughs> adult novelties in the bedroom? Because uh, I'm a big fan. Yeah. Um, some, uh, I mean, sometimes I like everything just to be natural, but I mean, you do have to do different things and spice it up, you know, make things different, make things exciting, use different rooms. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm like a wild child. I'm very raw. Mm -hmm. I'm very animalistic in the bedroom most of the time. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah, like people, you know, and there are times where, where it's nice to be romantic and, and sweet, but there are also times where somebody just wants to get raw, you know, and, and it's allowed. You know, a lot of women don't always allow. Allowed. It's yeah. always allowed because I believe the bedroom is, you know, supposed to be a safe zone where there's no judgments in place. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, it, it's a, you know, let loose, go for it and, you know, happy comings, because I'm all about that. Happy coming. Yes, <laughs> that's right. But but it is. It could be sensual and sexy and and rough and sweet all at the same time. Oh, yeah. So you hear that, everyone? Rough, sweet, all the time. I'm with it. <laughs> yep. Oh, I you like know, you, little, Monica. Little spanking, so and little spanking you. never hurt nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think a lot of people, there's, there's such a, a stigma and a taboo, especially for women, in regards to in regards to sex, uh, sex and, and sexual behavior and sexual arousal, and women have to start learning to give themselves permission. It is Absolutely. their right to to feel feel pleasure in, in any way, whether it's by themselves or with a partner or or whatever the case may be. It is it is your right. I mean, that's that's one of the strongest energies that you can have as a human being. Absolutely. I, I'm all about self-pleasure, pleasure with your partner, just mm -hmm. comings, happy comings, right? We're yep. talking about that because orgasms are great and people don't realize like how happy and you don't have to be so stressed about everything. This is like a major stress reliever. So I'm all about it and, you know, keeps you looking young. So I, I'm I'm loving it. Can you tell our viewers where they can find you, like all your websites and all that good stuff? Jess, can you hear me? Jess, are you still there? It looks like we're having technical difficulties. I think Jess froze, guys. Let's see if we have information on her website. I believe that, you know, YouTube is acting crazy today and Google Hangouts is just acting crazy. So let's see. You can reach Jess at thedatingpole.com.
Hello. Oh, did I get you? You got me, um, Monica. Oh, sorry. Hi, Jess. Oh, uh, Monica's Hi. computer. Uh, I think it froze or shut down or something. So, yeah, mine mine ended up freezing. It went like whatever, and then it wouldn't move. Yeah. So she told me to hold her down. Okay. Hi, guys. I'm the publicist, Dillis one running behind and doing all the craziness for Monica. So sorry that her. Um, mm -hmm computer shut down a little while ago but she wanted me to proceed so she wanted just to give all your um, social media information where people can find you um, to tell us more about your two books that you wrote I know that you have um, what is it the first book let me hold on let me remember seeking oh, her come on. Dillis you've <laughs> read my books come on. <laughs> I, did. I did read the book but um yeah, well, she wanted you to finish telling the viewers about your books, where they could find the books, and um, any upcoming events that you might have going on, or anything that you have going on. Oh, my God. I have so much stuff going on. But, yeah, my, my first book, Seeking Her, Knowing You, um, is pretty much when you are getting over a relationship and trying to get yourself back ready to get into the dating world. Um, and then Zero to Ninety, of course, is the first 90 days of dating when you meet somebody. Um, and you can find both of those. They're both bestsellers. You can find them on Amazon.com. I also have two podcasts, the Drinks with Jess podcast, which you can find on iTunes and Mixcloud. Um, that one's been going for about two years, and that's where we bring the LGBT community together and its allies uh, to share in each other's missions and help each other grow. We've had some great guests. Dillis, you've been a guest. It's awesome. Um, and then I just launched in February the Dating Pool podcast, and that is a podcast specifically for women um, it's catered to the LGBT community, but if you are a straight woman out there, you can surely listen in too. And that is also on iTunes and Mixcloud. And that's been doing very well. I mean, you know, 10,000 downloads in a week, you know, that's, that's pretty good. So, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. You said that the first, um, when you did the first po podcast with, um, it, it hit 10,000 views or something to that effect. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. So, um, you know, we're trying to build a community. We want to overflow that pool. And so many people go through the same experiences. And the only way to, to get through those and even learn to understand yourself is to hear about other people's experiences and, and share and help each other. And yep. that's really the purpose of the whole podcast. So you can find uh, more information on Drinks with Jess at DWJPHL.com. And, of course, uh, the DatingPoolPodcast.com, uh, where you can find that one. And, uh, yeah, uh, so it's been a cool ride. But now we're coming up well, to Pride season, so I will be out and about all over the eastern seaboard. Right. Doing my stuff. But I uh Hey Pride. I yes, <laughs> I know. Me too. It's it's a busy time and it's very tiring for me, but I want to get out there and meet as many people as as possible. And um every time I go to a Pride event, I I actually get to meet like new listeners or people that are on my Facebook that I've never met before. Um, so it's a pretty cool time. Awesome. Yes. Well, congratulations to you with all your success and everything you're doing. You know that I'm one of your biggest fans. I'm, each, I'm a Jess fan, Jess groupie. <laughs> I know. I've, I got to get you a t-shirt that says Teen Jess. Yes. I need one of those t-shirts and I have my, my t-shirt on too. Oh yeah. Look at that. I love me some Dillis. That's for sure. I love me some Jess. <laughs> All right, honey. Well, thank you so much for coming to Monica's show. I will make sure that you get all the footage that um, from you, your, you guys' this interview and everything else. And I'm just going to go ahead and try to figure out what the hell's going on. I think it's a YouTube live glitch or something taking place because Hope couldn't even hop on either. So I need to figure all that out. It happens, girl. That's, that's what live is all about. 
I know. It's all good. But mm, mucho, mucho love. And we'll talk soon, okay? All right. Sounds good. Love you. Love you too, babe.